This is Jim Merritt with Quick Trainer, your QuickBooks and Accounting Experts. Today's video is about bank reconciliations. I get a lot of questions about how do I reconcile my bank account and how do I find discrepancies, um, etc. And I just wanted to take a, a few minutes to, um, to, to explain how I go about doing bank reconciliations and some tips that will help you um, find where the issues are um, when you have those issues. This is going to be um, a two-part series, so this is part one of two, and let's get started by just clicking on the Reconcile. And this applies whether, you're, um, whether you are reconciling a bank account, a credit card account, a loan account, um, it's all done the same way. And so to begin with, the first thing I want to talk about is making sure that your ending balance date right here, this is the date that the bank closes your bank statement for that month, make sure it matches in QuickBooks. Now it should match here, it should also match here and here. All right, now once you have it matching in those three places, each month it will um, increase itself after you've reconciled it will increase into, into the next month by default it's going to increase um, to the end date of the month um, unless you ended the bank statement say on 830 um, then it would increase on next month you know to 930 or 1030 or etc um, so you may find yourself changing the statement date by one or two days um, throughout the year, but that's about it. Now, the next part, and this is this is critical, guys. Listen to me, is making sure that your beginning balance here matches your bank statements beginning balance here. If they do not match, you can't go any further. You, you will not get it to reconcile properly unless this beginning balance date matches. Now, what do you do if it doesn't match? Well, you go to locate discrepancies and you look at a discrepancy report. And this discrepancy report is going to show you what transaction or transactions have changed or been deleted since you last reconciled. Now, you, you may ask yourself, why would a transaction um, that's already been uh, reconciled why would it change or why would you delete it and the answer is simple you wouldn't you shouldn't um, it shouldn't happen but the reality is is it does um, it's typically it happens when somebody is trying to fix a particular issue and they just don't realize what doing what the change they're about to make what the impact is going to be all right, does that make sense? And we'll talk a few in a few more minutes um, about this reconciliation discrepancy report as well. Um, so going back to reconciliation, make sure these date this date matches. Next, I'm going to plug in my ending balance directly from my bank statement. Okay, so 21602.32. If I had a service charge, um, it would you would find the service charge on your bank statement typically and you would enter it here if this was an interest bearing account you would enter any interest here alright and I'm just fixing those dates again once we've got that ending balance plugged in we've got this date matching and our beginning balance we've confirmed it matches we've entered all this information it's time to click continue okay now there is a little um, box right up here called High Transaction After the Statement's End Date. So what QuickBooks is going to do when you click this is it's going to hide any transactions that are after this date right here. Again, one more reason to make sure that that date matches your bank statement. So for instance, if we come down here, we'll see that we've got two transactions in September. Um, if we come over here, sorry, if we come over here, we'll see we have one deposit. Well, we're reconciling August in this point. We don't care about the September transactions. And we really want to get them off of our radar screen right now because they can only serve to confuse us. So I'm going to click this button. 
and we're going to see that all those September transactions they indeed they disappear okay um, now you're going to notice that our dates are 2028 um, that's quite a ways out there what 15 years I guess is that right no 13 years maybe I don't know uh, I'm gonna count it I can't do math um, in any case um, let's see what is that 28 uh, 18 17, 16, 15 years yeah I was right the first time see all right so from here looking at our bank statement we can see we have deposits okay so we're just going to match those deposits with what we see on the bank statement. And we also can see here that there's a total of 14 deposits, so we know how many we have. And 877. Okay. Now, once I'm done with the deposits, this particular bank statement shows me what my deposits total they sh it shows me right here but all bank statements if they don't show you here are going to at least show you up on the first page what your total deposits are and then I can look also right in this area and I can see yes my deposits match my bank statement that's good we know that there's no problem with deposits next we come over here um, to our debits and our checks um, that have um, that have been written and I want you to note and this applies to over here as well as to over here you can sort QuickBooks by any of these columns that started in version 2009 of QuickBooks and continues forward it's a great feature I love it and so I'm going to sort by check number just to get all my debits together and to get all of my hard check numbers together and I'm going to just mosey down here to the next page and I'm going to see, okay, there's uh, 268, there's 1200, there's 602, 1108, 241, IRS for 404, 9307, 392, 154, 57. All right, I'll stop there and then I'll come down to my checks and I can see that check 1776 cleared, 1777 cleared, 1778. We skip 1779. Okay, and people will ask me, well, what do you do with that? You, nothing. You leave it. You leave it right there unchecked, and most likely it would clear in the on the next month's statement. All right, and um, let's see. Ah, oh, we're missing a transaction for seventy-eight dollars and forty-four cents. Well, what do you do with that? Um, it's pretty simple. You enter it. Um, really, it's that simple. Um, so we're going to just stay right where we are here and um, we're actually going to take a minute and just enter this transaction by going to the check writing screen. Uh, I'll put that in as a debit. I'll spell it correctly. And um, looks like it happened on 830. All right, now I happen to know that those are merchant service fees. 7844. Okay, and I'll put a little memo in here that says that, merchant service fees. I'm big on memos, guys. You'll find that out really quick when you work with us. Um, I always believe in putting memos in transactions. All right, so now that I've got it in there, I can come back over here and I can click it. And you can see we have a difference of zero. All right, All right let's stop right here and move on to part two um, in just a second.